five super rich guys who jumped bail but were jailed. Marcus Schrenker, Norman Wyshu, Rikesh Saxena, Tony Mockbull, Roman Polanski, all these people were arrested in absentia. But the police did not succeed in catching and imprisoning them for a long time. Here are their stories. Marcus Schrenker. Crime, Fraud. Following a $533,500 judgment for fraudulent transactions as a wealth manager, Marcus Schrenker did what any millionaire hotshot with a bunch of personal luxury vehicles would do. He hopped on his private plane and flew in a southeasterly direction, then faked a distress call, set the plane on autopilot, and parachuted into a swamp. Approaching local police incognito and dripping wet, he claimed to have been in a canoeing accident. After being taken to a hotel, he fled into the woods on foot and, two days later, picked up his motorcycle from storage and kept going for another few hours, before getting nabbed at a Florida campground. From crimes incurred during the plane crash in Manhunt, Schrenker earned an additional four years in prison, according to AOL News. Norman Wyshu. Crime, Fraud. Norman Wyshu accomplished the incredible feat of jumping bail while becoming a high-profile fundraiser for the Democratic Party. After pleading no contest to one count of felony grand theft in 1992, the apparel magnate fled to Hong Kong. When he returned to California several years later, he had dropped the middle initial from his name and somehow attracted no attention from U.S. prosecutors. The new Norman Shu made a career of fundraising for John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, and others, out of which he developed a new Ponzi scheme. Shu's pastor and present crimes caught up to him in 2007, when he was arrested for large-scale fraud and jumping bail. Unbelievably, Shu posted a $2 million bail and fled again. This time he was caught before leaving the country, according to the New York Times. Rikesh Saxena. Crime. Embezzlement. When Rakesh Saxena was accused in 1996 of embezzling billions of dollars from a failing Bangkok bank, he promptly booked it to Canada. Attempts to extradite the banker produced 13 years of trials and appeals, the longest legal battle in Canadian history. For much of this time, Saxena was out on bail and free to enjoy his fortune. The case ended in 2011 when the Canadian Supreme Court ruled that the ailing Saxena could be sent back to Thailand, where he now faces trial, according to the Bangkok Post. Tony Mockbull, Crime, Murder, Drug Trafficking, etc. Fat Tony Mockbull, an Australian who looks and acts like Tony Soprano, was not about to wait around for his trial. While out on bail in 2006, the gangster secretly purchased the luxury yacht, to which he made extensive modifications for security, long-distance travel, and his own concealment. He also recruited a crew of Greek sailors. And then it was off to the Mediterranean, where he took refuge in Greece and Lebanon. Like other rich fugitives, Mokba was soon involved in a legal battle to avoid extradition. But the Australian police wouldn't wait, and they nabbed him in May 2008 from a seaside cafe in Greece where he wore an Armani wig as part of a flimsy disguise, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. Roman Polanski. Crime, statutory rape. Being a fugitive from the law could be a lot more painful than it was for Roman Polanski. The Hollywood director spent 31 years abroad, on the run after pleading guilty to charges related to his having sex with a 13-year-old in California. Over three decades, Polanski lived a life of luxury skipping between villas in Switzerland, pictured, France, and other countries with tenuous extradition rules, meanwhile directing a slew of films and winning an Oscar for Best Director in 2002. But celebrity and old age were no shield when, yielding to continuous US pressure, Swiss police suddenly arrested the director while en route to a Lifetime Achievement Award in Zurich. Polanski is currently in a Swiss gal, hoping for a shot at bail.